Bruce, in trying to understand how the mind works, my own mind, everyone's mind, uh, it's really helpful, the kind of work you've done that goes back to, to children, to see how mental states developed. Take one, the so-called theory of mind, where you, where you, at some stage, begin to realize that other people sort of have thoughts. Uh, how does that developmental process work? What happens before, during, and after? There's a lot of work on theory of mind, and this is this capacity to understand that other people have beliefs, uh, mental states which differ from your own. Anyone who's ever sort of uh, interacted with a two-year-old or a three-year-old knows that they can be very egocentric, kind of, they assume that everyone has the same thoughts that they have. But around Cla classically, when a child puts their hands over eyes, they think they're hiding from, yeah. from you. You can't see them because yeah. they can't see you. That's right. So <laughs> they, they can't take a perspective uh, right. from another person. Uh, but around about three to four, there's a, class, there's a very significant transition in that capability. At this point, children seem to understand that other people can have beliefs. Uh, most importantly, they can understand that they have false beliefs. So, for example, if I was to try and work out what you were thinking, I might be able to attribute you with a mind and, and assume that you share the same beliefs that I do. But if you have a false belief, then I can have, I can appreciate that you have a, a mental content which differs from myself. Mm -hmm. So that's really important because that means that I can understand that you don't think what I think. Then I can manipulate you and I can anticipate what you're going to do next. Mm -hmm. So it's a very powerful way of predicting and controlling behavior. And that kicks in around about three to four years. Mm -hmm. Now, there is some evidence that uh, it can appear or markers can appear much earlier in below two years. But those tend to be what we call implicit measures. So, for example, where a child will look if they think they're anticipating someone else's mm -hmm. behavior. But I've always been a little bit concerned about uh, implicit measures. Do they really equate with conscious awareness? Well, by definition, they can't. But do, do they equate with functional behavior? Mm. And I think that's a general story in development. You can find lots of evidence much earlier on at children. But whether it becomes fully functional, that might be something which takes much longer to, to emerge. What happens in cases of autism? Is that a disruption of theory of mind? Yeah, effectively, it's been called mind blindness. So no. you can't really understand that someone has a different perspective. Now, there are some classic cases, uh, famous people such as Temple Grandin, for example. Uh, she uh, is a high-functioning uh, individual with autism. But the way that she manages to interact is simply becoming very uh, expert behaviorist. So she recognizes people's behavior mm -hmm. and then refers back to uh, all the examples she's encountered in the past. And then on the basis of that, she makes a prediction of what will happen next. But for you and I, or for most of us, we can easily just automatically assume or put ourselves in someone else's shoes to, to sort of figure out what we would do in their case. Because without a theory of mind or with a diminished theory of mind, you're unable to assume what that person would do given the state of affairs that that person is in. You're unable yeah. to project yourself? I mean, how does well, it Well, there's a classic test, for example, <laughs> if I show you a box of candy, we have a candy in this country called Smarties, and I say, what do you think's in there? And you'll say, well, it's Smarties. And then if I open it up and show you it's got pencils, and I said, well, you thought there were Smarties in there, but there's actually pencils. What do you think Joe Bloggs will think when he comes in? <laughs> now, you'll say, well, he'll think there's Smarties in there. So you'll know that you had an incorrect belief. But a child with autism will say pencils. Uh, uh, so uh. they can't suppress or take the perspective. Because they now know that there are pencils in, in, in that box. That's right. And they'll assume that that person will know it as well because there are pencils in that box. Right. Now, there are two ways of actually interpreting that response. There's one way to say is that they don't have any ability to uh, attribute a theory of mind, okay, so that they, they don't understand that other people have different views. Mm -hmm. Another way to interpret that is they can't inhibit the tendency to, to, know, to say what they know is true. So although theory of mind sounds like it's uh, all to do with taking intentional stances and mm -hmm. cognitive positions, mm -hmm. there's a line of reasoning suggesting that uh, children with autism may have an impairment in what we call executive function. And the executive function is this capacity to, to hold things in mind, to, but also to suppress uh, knowledge mm -hmm. that you know to be true. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes called the curse of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Now, this actually is a general principle in development, that when you look at children, this, this period from about two to four years of age, they typically have a real problem of suppressing these, these impulses. 
Now this might be related to the frontal lobes because the frontal lobes are areas which uh, are continuing to develop well into teenage years. If you impair frontal lobes as an adult, either deliberately through alcohol or debauchery, or it happens through disease, you have an inability to suppress these impulses, and you also have an inability to suppress knowledge. So what might be going on in the theory of mind is this inability to, to stop what you know to be true. Is theory of mind existent in, in other species, in animals, in chimps, dolphins? Well, this is one of the big uh, controversies. The, the term theory of mind was originally or originated out of the work done with chimpanzees. Mm -hmm. And so I'm of the position that I think they do have varying degrees of theory of mind, and there's very deg you know, varying degrees of sophistication of theory, theory of mind. You know, a case of does he know that she know that he knows? <laughs> so you can see how it can get embedded yeah. and more complex. Right. But yes, I think that some animals and primates in particular do have a theory of mind kind of way of reasoning, especially if they're in situations of, of competition. So for example, if there's a dominant male, uh, you know, the more uh, subservient uh, animals will, 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 will try and read the dominant male's um, theory of mind. They'll try and understand what he's gonna do next. So I think they can use theory of mind in the correct circumstances, but not all animals can do so. Would a, uh, what today we'd call an inanimate object, a super, super computer uh, built, would, would that have a theory of mind? Could it emulate a theory of mind? Could it simulate a theory of mind? I don't see why not. Um, it would rely on all the behavioral um, evidence and then on, the, on its database of past experiences, try to anticipate what would happen. Yep, I think it could effectively have a theory of mind in the same way that if it was sufficiently complicated, it should produce all the reports of consciousness. Now, whether it ever has a subjectivity of consciousness or the subjectivity of the theory of mind, well, that's, that's the big problem, isn't it, as, as, as we know. Um, taking the intentional stance, yes, I think we do that naturally. It's just How important is theory of mind in our uh in our conduct as human beings interacting with society. I mean, it's something that when you say it, it sounds like it's something peripheral to what we do, but, but really it, it's, it, 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 it subsumes our entire life because we're always in every interpersonal situation, we're using that capacity. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, I think some people are very along those dimensions. Some people are uh, particularly keen to make sure they, they read other people well, and others don't, don't give care. A, don't care. Yeah. So, you know, they, they don't find it necessary to adopt that, uh, you know. That, and, that. and are those people more maladaptive to society? Well, I don't know is the answer to that. I think we recognize people who seem to be very sort of preoccupied with their own positions, but uh, they might become the, uh, you know, the sociopaths who don't care what other people care. Or, or the president of the company. Or the presidents of the company. <laughs>